we can't get through all the stories no. in this little sort of soundbite, but uh, you can give us an insight perhaps into one or two things we can look out for. Well, as I say, we we, uh, we touch on the the downside of the game and the disappointments involved in the game that comes with a, a player that plays at my level and my ability. Um, we talk about my personal highs, like playing against England, uh, playing at Cardiff, getting to Scottish Cup finals with Falkirk and Dunfermline. Uh, but there's bittersweet memories in those cup finals because I played a big part in getting the clubs there and then was dropped for both finals. So the side of the games that people don't see, we touch on family and how when you're going through a hard time uh, on the playing field, how it can affect your family. Um, there's myself talking about what do you do when you step away from the game. Um, leaving school and working nine to five and playing part time, which a lot of lads in England and Scotland do. Um, that's real. That's real football, that type of, that's real full-time football, that. Um, so, again, there's ups and downs, there's talking about visits to Vietnam and uh, Taiwan and China when I was playing in Hong Kong, and there's playing against Yugoslavia and Sweden and South Korea for the Hong Kong League Select when I was over there, meeting Jack Charlton. Um, there's, there's so many ups and downs, meeting heroes that you never thought you would be. I was a Hearts fan as a kid. John Robertson was my hero growing up as a centre forward. Now I regard, regard, I regard John as a close friend of mine, which is bizarre. Playing summer football with people like Chris Waddle in, a, in an over 35s, I mean, come on. That doesn't happen to wee guys like me from Scotland. So, listen, there's a, there's a hopefully there's a bit of everything for somebody and, it, and it's not your typical sort of David Beckham, uh, Wayne Rooney type book. Maybe hopefully it's closer to uh, where a lot of the Wednesday Falkirk Dunfermline supporters are. You've obviously played alongside and uh, I'm sure played for some interesting characters who've had some strange methods at times as well. I'm sure that'll come up. Oh, wow. Well, um, I wouldn't want to tell you everything, but when you've had people like Guy Branston and Paul Heckenbottom and Lee Peacock uh, <laughs> in your playing ranks, then there's a few stories to be told with regards to that. Um, playing against people like uh, Henrik Larsson and Chris Sutton and, as I say, the English lads that we played against. Uh, I've, I've, had a, I've had a heck of a good run at it as a player. I'm hoping to get a heck of a good run as a coach as well, learning all the time. Yeah. Brilliant, so. <laughs> you get a bit of stick already, so even as a coach you've got no respect, have you? <laughs> See, who's that? Who's that giving you back? See, bad it's jealousy. It's jealousy, it gets you everywhere. If you if you go back four, <laughs> five, six years when I was a player here, you would get the exact same thing. It would normally be Jermaine Johnson or Lee Peacock or Guy Branson that would be shouting out, but now you even get these guys who um, would love to have the type of career I had at Wednesday. They're just <laughs> They're just jealous, that's all it is. Well, that's what it is. I mean, the memories of that day at Cardiff will be the one that I'm sure that really stick out in your, your mind, and I'm sure you've dedicated a large chunk of the book to that. There's that famous picture of you in the, the shower there yeah. with, you know, uh, I suppose a moment of contemplation, I suppose, the best way to describe it. No, that was just absolutely shattered. Oh, that's shattered. all it was, oh, okay. yeah, that's all it was. <laughs> and to be fair, I never even realised the photo had been taken. I was sitting there and actually it was myself and Paul Heckenbottom, two of the sort of more experienced lads, and Paul's just out of shot there. But I think Steve, the photographer, was getting covered in champagne in the changing room and suddenly thought, I have to get out of here, pick the cup up, and just saw the two of us sitting there and he's just plunked it down, stepped back, took the photograph. I never realised he had done it until the actual photo came out. So... Um, Good times, great memories. Uh, a fantastic group of players. On paper, probably not the best group of players that Sheffield Wednesday's ever had, but for team spirit, that's, I've been very lucky. Dunfermline, we had a great team spirit at Falkirk, but that group at Sheffield Wednesday, as I say, as individuals, probably not the greatest group of players in the world, but see, as a team, I'll tell you what, I would have backed us against anybody in that season. You could sense it though, you know when it all came together, there was like 10, 11 new players all arrived at the start of that season. Whilst it took a, a little while to mm -hmm. get going, I think Chris Turner lost his job yeah. to start with, yeah. and Paul Sturrock picked up the reins and took you through, but yeah. there was a real camaraderie and there was, there was fun, but also I'm sure there was hard work as well. There was, I mean, Dave Allen, the chairman at the time, I mean, he's, he's, a lot of people have their own thoughts on Dave, he was brilliant for me, but one thing he did put into place was that any player signing for Sheffield Wednesday had to live within a 15 mile radius. And that meant a lot of guys were uh, living in S6, S10, S11. So whenever after training we went for a coffee or if we had won a game, we were out for a, a drink with girlfriends or partners on a Saturday night, we'd always see five or six, seven of your own teammates out, which built that little sort of family attitude and um, back each other to the hill. And I think that helped us through because we went through a rough time just before the end of that season and we had to go to Hull. Uh, what was it, a second last game of the season to get a victory to ensure we're in the playoffs. Um, 
And I think that type of team spirit dragged us through. It was, we it were was wobbling, a great time. Well, I remember oh, going to Hartlepool, massive. we got slaughtered up there, didn't we? Yeah, yeah we, had, we took an absolute pounding on the day. It was a soaking wet night and um, things just went bad from us. And we put a heck of a lot of pressure on ourselves. And oh God, I feel sorry for the supporters of this football club because we did put them through it that year. We put them through it all the time. So um, they stuck with us and they had a great day out of Hull, which led to two great days against uh, Brentford and then the ultimate day down at Cardiff. And again, you don't do it the easy way, do we? We take it to eight minutes to go and listen, read the book. I'm telling you too much about you it. You are, you are. The other thing I want to just ask you very quickly about was the fact that I think you played every position, didn't you, for the yeah. club, mm. including in goal, and we won that game. And that was a, was it Frank Simic when I think they, they'd scored and everyone was getting all excited for, for Millwall and then it was disallowed and we went down the other end and scored. We won that game and I had a clean sheet. You can't forget no, the clean sheet that. side of things. So. Yeah, listen, it was a six-point game for us. Um, Paul Sturrock decided to go with a positive. He left the goalkeeper off the bench and put an extra striker on the bench just in case we needed to go for it. And Sod's Law, David Lucas, I feel sorry for the kid because this story comes up so many times and it's a, it's a nightmare for him to hear over and over. But he's gone down, twisted his knee about ten minutes before half-time, so I've gone in. Net. Thank goodness uh, I only had ten minutes to put up with the Millwall fans behind me. At least the whole second half I had the Wednesday fans behind me. But as you say, Corner swung in, about 15 bodies on top of me, ball goes straight into the back of the net. Millwall, 10 of them celebrating in the corner because it was such a big game for them as well. Referee gives a foul against them, we put the ball down, run it up the park and I don't know who, what was more surprising, Frankie Simic scoring a goal or me keeping a clean sheet. It was, uh, it was unbelievable, it was the worst goal you've ever seen in your life but could have been the biggest goal for us that season in survival. Yeah, I mean, the, the, after the, the highs of Cardiff, it was all about survival it that was, next season, absolutely. wasn't it? And I think, you know, we brought a couple of players in, Dion Burton and Mark Studgay yeah. came in and they made a big difference. But yeah. but being part of a side that survived, you know, in that championship, you know, that, that was an achievement as well, wasn't it? The championship's the toughest league, in, in my opinion, in the world. When you look round it, it's, nobody can guess who's going who's gonna to get promoted, who's going to get relegated in that league. And it's proven that again this season. It, I mean... Two or three wins shoots you straight up the league, two or three defeats shoots you down towards relegation and um, that season was 100% all about survival. We, as I said to you earlier, I mean the, the team that got promoted, you look at it on paper, were never the greatest group of players in the world and we had to strengthen and we did do one or two, we'd done enough to survive and bring in one or two players. Um, and then I think it was the following season and the season after that, we were we went on a heck of a run near the end of the season. We almost got into the playoff area. We just missed out after losing at Birmingham that year. And um, listen, Sheffield Wednesday is a roller coaster of a football club. And being as a player, as a coach, or as a supporter, there's so many. There's a heck of a lot more lows there are, than there are highs. But the highs are probably stick in your head a lot more than if you were a supporter for a Man United or an Arsenal. Well, I'm sure you'll get a great insight if you read No Bull, which is what no it's bull. called, and where can we get hold of this? Um, it should be in Waterstones next week, it will be on Amazon in the next two or three days, and I am doing a signing at 12.30 at the Owls Superstore on Saturday before the, before the Ipswich game, so all are welcome. Excellent. Just one final question on your current job. Are you enjoying that? It's something different. As you say, you've made a career as a player. Now you're trying to make your, your mark as a coach and trying to develop the future generation of Sheffield Wednesday. Absolutely. I know. It's fantastic. And I mean, we have a small group under 21s. I think there's, we've got about eight players signed. Uh, when you get two or three injuries, we've got a couple out on loan at the moment. That means we're using 16 and 17 year olds at the under 21 level. We went to Derby uh, midweek and Derby are always very, very strong. We And we used four 16 year olds and five 17 year olds in the team so it was always going to be a tough ask but th this is the sort of opportunities that we're wanting to give players we're probably results wise could be better but there is reasons for it it's not excuses there are reasons behind it and I think when you go to Derby and they're mostly 20 21 year olds against 16 17 year olds it's uh, always going to be a tough ask but there's few pleasing aspects and and the players are getting tested early and they're showing a lot of bottle and it's listen it's great to be part of it it's great to see the enthusiasm and the um, young kids that really want to make a go of it in the game. Well Lee, uh, great to speak to you again Thank and you. I hope that the book goes really well for you, you and get plenty of people uh, checking it out because I'm sure it'll be a brilliant read. Brilliant. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Well we're back at Hillsborough Arena and uh, John Pearson's with me uh, just uh, for the final time John. Uh, your thoughts on the game against Ipswich, aside under Mick McCarthy that you know will be well organised and you know he seems to have done a decent job there in the top 10 at the moment. Yeah, I think if I remember last year when he when he took over, they were struggling at the bottom of the table alongside us, and they, they picked up and had a really good finish to the season. And so, I mean, Mick McCarthy, we all know him and either love him or hate him. I, I actually <laughs> think he's a good character, um, but 
you know, obviously he he's go, he goes into clubs and he's, he's done it before. He's turned clubs around and uh, he's made a decent job at Ipswich. And they you know it's, it's going to be another tough game. Yeah, uh, a tough game, but with the Hillsborough faithful right behind them, as they were in that game against Doncaster, they can make such a difference. I know sometimes you can say who motivates who first, but when the fans are right on side, the players must you know feel ten foot tall. Well, yeah, without a doubt, I mean that the way the crowd responded to the performance in the Doncaster game was, was sensational you know and uh, I think if the players come out with that same attitude you know okay we they've had a couple of setbacks and that's been unfortunate uh, they didn't deserve that they were I think unlucky in both games so they've had a couple of setbacks you've got to put that out of your mind and you've just got to start again and uh, if they do that the crowd will respond and uh, we'll, Hillsborough will be rocking again on Saturday. How important is it having Lewis Buxton back in the team? He made his return against Brighton. I know he'd been out for a while and might have been a bit rusty. He was in the Leeds game, if you remember. I think he did first half against Millwall. But he's such a, a key man for Wednesday. He has become that, hasn't he, over the yeah. last few seasons? Well, he's become Mr. Reliable at the back. You know, you know exactly what you're going to get from Lewis and he's been consistent over the last couple of years and he's, he puts good performances in week in and week out. And so to have somebody like that with his experience and his knowledge and, you know, his enthusiasm, you know, can be nothing but good for us. Dave Jones said he hasn't even put out the same back four twice this season. Yeah. Potentially that can happen at the weekend and that that's again... a. a well, it's vital, isn't it, to any team having a, a yeah. steady and consistent back four to work from? Well, exactly. And, and yeah, we've lost Anthony Garder, who's you know done really well since he's joined us. But I think that, you know, from the one game I saw Roger Johnson play, I think he, he came in and did a really good job. And hopefully that, that can continue while ever uh, Anthony Garder's out. Yeah, Johnson and there's McPhail who's come in as well. Yeah. He, he sort of leads in a different way. Maybe Roger Johnson's a vocal and kind of in-your-face type character. I, I, I think McPhail strikes me as letting everyone see what he can do with the ball and yeah. kind of follow my lead, if you yeah. will. Yeah, without a doubt. I thought he was great in the game against Doncaster. He wanted the ball all the time. He hardly gave it away. You know, and even when we'd had the goal against us, he was still wanting the ball, you know, and he was still like leading in a different way, as you said. And uh, he was showing people, look, I'll, I'll have the ball. I want the ball here. You know, give me the ball even when he was marked. You know, he, he showed a, a different kind of passion in, in that sort of uh, environment. So Saturday of the day, we get that first win? I've, yeah, of course it is. All right, confidence there from John Pearson. Just before I let you go, uh, just tell us a little bit about uh, what you're involved in then uh, down in the, the community. And a little bit different, I guess, to the academy work that, that yes, the guys there do. Just tell us, what, what is a football in the community programme for those that maybe aren't quite aware? There's loads of different things that we do. I mean, we go into schools, uh, we've got our own education programme. And, and this is an education programme. These lads haven't been picked because of their footballing ability. They've been picked because they got good grades in their GCSEs last year. So this is an educational course, but their reward is to go up, up to Leeds and there's a fantastic arena up there for futsal. And every two weeks they're playing a league. Uh, we've got three teams. We've got, a, a te we've got two teams from last year when it was their first year on, on the level three course. Uh, and they go up and they alternate. So every, every week, a, one week A and B team will go up and the next week the C team will go up. Uh, and I think it's a great reward for, for the hard work they put in during the education. And it's what the club's all about as well. It's not just about the first team and you know match days because it's about the community and that's what you know a good sports club does, doesn't it? It brings no, everyone no. together. Yeah, exactly. So as I said, these lads haven't all been picked for the football and ability, but they're all enthusiastic. They're all willing to learn. They really love on a Friday when I take them up to Uden Valley and take them around the dam on a five-mile run. Oh yeah, you so see, you're still flogging them, aren't you? Those old ways from your your playing days yeah, with Wilco yeah. and Co. Well, it's also uh, helping to keep me fit, so I'm uh, really pleased. Exactly, he's trying to look after number one. That's what he's doing. Uh, but but it's great sometimes, I guess, as well when you do maybe spot maybe a little, little talent that hasn't been identified by the coaches. Is that something you try and feed back into to the club? Yes, it, it, I mean it would be. But uh, to be fair, I think at 16 year old, then probably it's very unlikely that we're going to you know pick pick anybody up from these courses this the course is, is main is first and foremost education and uh, after that you know they, they get the uh, reward as I said of, of playing futsal which is a fantastic game of, you know it's, it's a really good game I suppose as well now the way that modern clubs are they've got all the bases covered haven't they everything you know if there's a kid that's half decent at six or seven he's been spotted hasn't he he's yeah, been identified yeah. There's very, I think there's very few get will get through the net now that uh, big, well, any clubs will uh, will find. You know, probably academy teams are run. Maybe if you got one player a year out of the academy, then you'd have a good academy, wouldn't you? Mm. Just finally, putting your other hat on, 
Who's your special guest this weekend? Who are you going to be showing around the rooms? Um, I think Mike Pickering's coming down as a special guest this week. Uh, Mike does help us out on occasions. Uh, Hurst is back. I've just spoke to him this morning, so he's back from his. I, I think he had a wedding and he's been golfing abroad or whatever. So Not he's like Hurst, playing golf. Good to have him back. Uh, and Laurie Madden's back. Uh, I think he's been away as well. So you know, be good to get the team back together. It's good that they're all still involved though and you're still part of the well, club. Well, they're all passionate. I mean, Nurse is passionate and obviously Laurie's passionate about the club. He's not born a, a Wednesday supporter but loves the club. Uh, I suppose Erste wasn't born a Wednesday supporter but he, he absolutely loves the club as well, as everybody knows. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time, John. Appreciate that. I'll no let you problem. get back to work. I've been keeping you from it for the last half hour or so. Well, I'll be back here on Saturday afternoon with live commentary of Wednesday against Ipswich Town as the Owls look to back those three vital points. Make sure you join us for all of the build-up from 2.30 and then it's kick-by-kick -kick commentary with myself and John Pearson from 3. We'll see you then.